Yeah, get them. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Alliance Show. If you have no idea who we are, what's going on, or <laughs> why you're even here, first of all, welcome. Second of all, all the information you will need is down in the description. And hey, while you're down there, man, why don't you check out our giveaway? We've got a giveaway going on that we'll announce 45 minutes into the show. But uh, first, I should probably say who we are. I'm Jack Malaco. To uh, my yeah. uh, right, your left is the always lovely Sylvester Lewis. Yeah, man. Caught me with my hair down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cleaning the mirrors. I like these. You see these? these wow. Are... What do we got here? Yeah, for our video viewers, we got some mirrors in here, boy. We yeah. got some serious skills going on in the tables even back. Look at that. We got rid of those wooden things. This is It's, it's feeling more and it's, more like a real set now. It's starting to, uh, the shop is starting to take form. Yeah, We're it's getting all ready come for, together. Uh, for the Alliance Conference. Yeah, and man. And we're we're going to talk about that a little bit at the end, but yeah. I'm, I'm excited. So we've got a good show for you guys today. If you guys didn't see the title on this one, today we are talking about the Biddle, or Biddle, bitter rivalry between barbershops and salons. I don't even know if they know they're in a Biddle rivalry. That's a hard word to say. Bitter rivalry. Bitter rivalry. Bitter I, rivalry. I don't know, man. Do you I, think they're in a rivalry? I don't, think, I don't the think they're in a rivalry necessarily, but uh, I think we're going to kind of dive into the uh, to the yeah. aspects of the two, uh, maybe yeah. the differences. I think so, because I feel like there's really two camps of people. There's the type of guys that are really loyal to barbershops, and there's those that really will only go to salons. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, first on deck, man, uh, why don't we first show who's running the stream, first of all. What's up, Randa? You want to swing that around? There she Hello. is. On that old school camera. Okay, we're going to do something real quick. Oh, what's up? Hi guys! I do, ow, I got my beard That's caught in my Hannah. microphone. <laughs> I don't miss that. That stuff used to happen all the time when I had my beard. When it was longer, it would get caught in this microphone all oh, the time. Man. Yeah, so. it's probably this mic. That's why there's so much. Hair yeah, that's off probably why. Mic. No, I just put that there before this show, just so you can feel like I'm closer to you because we're farther away from each other. We're a little further away from yeah, each other. I can't than touch we are. you. I can't but. reach out and hold you anymore. But uh, <laughs> this is just getting a little weird start. Well, guys, we uh, we got some nice uh, style consultations on the way. So the way this is going to work is uh, we're going to pop some bad boys right into the center of the frame. We'll uh, read off their message they sent in to us. And Sylvester, how can people send in these messages? Cause yeah, man. We always get the question. How do I send in photos? Well, if you're tuning in for the first time, thanks for joining. This Absolutely. is the Beard Brain Alliance show. And if uh, if this is your first time, uh, welcome. Uh, if uh, what we do here on this on the show is we offer style consultations to anybody who is interested in getting a perspective from Beard Brand, yep. uh, Jack, myself, sometimes Carlos, Eric joins us. Uh, I'm pretty sure in a few weeks we'll have uh, Greg, Mahesh, and Jake uh, join us possibly on the stream. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, send in your photos over to style at beardbrand.com, and there is all the information in the description uh, mm -hmm. of this video. So uh, if you can't catch it now. Uh, Go over to Beard Brain, the Beard Brain YouTube channel. Look up mm -hmm. the Alliance Show, and you'll find all the description information uh, to get your photos over to us. But send it over to style at beardbrain.com. Be sure to let us know your name. Uh, if that's cool, be sure to let us know uh, your current age. Plays a long role a in yeah. uh, the journey of growing your hair and your beard and your style. Let us know uh, what your goal is. Uh, well, let us know how long you've been growing for in oh, yeah. that particular photo. Because mm -hmm. uh, that will also give us a perspective of, right. of how much time you've invested into the process. And then also let us know what your goal is. Uh, are you going for a year? Are you uh, trying to maintain a certain specific style? Or do you just want some advice on maybe some ways to change up the style for your hair for your beard, for your attire. Yep. And uh, man, we have hundreds of guys who send we in their do. photos uh, to style at beardbrand.com every single week. Yeah, we do. And so what we'll do is we'll try to get back in touch with you to let you know when you're going to be featured on the show so you can tune in live or catch it after the fact mm -hmm. or download it on iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Yeah, man. Big three. The big three. All right. And with that being said, why don't we pop in our first guy? All right. There he is. So who is this, Randa? Let me turn my man? mic on. All right. We have Tyler here. Tyler. Hi, Tyler. Tyler writes, hello, my name is Tyler. I'm 22 years old and have varying versions of a beard since my ju junior year in college. Okay. I've noticed that my mustache does not grow as fast as the beard. So when I do shave or trim, it tends to keep, oh, Hold on, that's cut off. Okay, I tend to keep the goatee in order to preserve the mustache. Okay. With curly hair, I see that my beard grows out more than it does naturally fall down. For my hair, 
Typically, typically, I get three or four fade on the side and a finger length on top. I'm looking primarily for advice on my beard and suggestions for a new hairstyle. Okay. I have seen thinning and recession in my hair near my temples. Okay. If you are able to get this on the Alliance Show, I would love whatever little quick advice you can give me back on this email. Best, Tyler. Sweet. All right, so the way that we'll do this now is uh, one of us will describe what Tyler looks like and the other will kick off the style consultation, okay? Would you like me to start? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll share what Tyler looks like. Okay, yeah, cool go for you. it. Uh, so Tyler, uh, he said he was at 20? 20, uh, 22. 22. So Tyler is a 22-year-old, as you heard Brandon describe, mm -hmm. uh, and he's a strapping-looking guy, man. He, he is uh, a handsome guy. I would, if I had to guess, I would guess that Tyler's about 6'3". He just looks like a so. really he looks tall, like a tall guy. Tall, well-built guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, um, let's see, man. It's hard to tell from this side of the face uh, what his face shape is. But I'd say like squarish, square maybe square, yeah. maybe oval, um, or maybe round. Uh, again, all this three. is a side profile. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, all three. All three. He's got all three faces. Yeah. Um, but uh, the side profile doesn't really lend to the face shape. But he does have a pretty full beard, man. I mean, I don't. He does. You know, I wouldn't classify this as a patchy beard. He's got the typical patches beneath the lip, like a lot of guys and most of us do. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the beard, man, is pretty dense, especially through the uh, through the jawline, through the cheek area. Mustache is trimmed pretty short, uh, but you can tell he's invested the time to grow that mustache as well. Uh, and I would say it's about maybe two to three inches in length from the chin uh, down, um, if you were to measure that out. And then his hair color is pretty dark. I would say it's probably a dark to dark brown to black. Yeah. Um, uh, definitely changes color from the crown. So like the top of his hair is black, and then uh, the, towards the bottom of the beard, the beard it kind of looks like it gets a little light. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and then he's got olive skin and. You know, Jack, I think this guy is a man after your own heart because he is rocking the chest hair. He is. He's got the chest so, hair peeking you out. You know, uh, yeah. My microphone's hiding mine today. <laughs> <laughs> but he does. Uh, he does. It does look like he's cleaning up the cheek line and the neckline. Mm -hmm. uh, but man, overall, good-looking guy. Uh, he does have a receding hairline. Now, this one I don't think is a high temple. I think this one's starting to be a little bit of a. Take it's a, a little bit of both. So this is probably what you call a widow's peak. Okay, widow's peak. There we go. All right. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yeah, what else? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> no, it's uh, cool. But, but his hair is uh, is relatively long on top and mm -hmm. short on sides. Yeah. On the sides. But yeah, man, I, uh, he's Tyler's wearing a, a white v-neck t-shirt, it looks like, uh, unless he's just like doing this thing. Yeah, he's, the, he's uh, giving us one of these. <laughs> he's giving us one of these in the... Uh, in the, uh, in the yeah, giving us a little JT action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you want me to kick off yeah, uh, his style show All yeah, right, Tyler. Man after my own heart, like you said, he's got the high temple hairline or the widow's peak, whatever you want to call it. He's got the uh, smaller mustache with the beard. And so what Tyler's looking for today at the at ripe age 22 is suggestions for the beard and then maybe a suggestion for the hairstyle, he said. So this, okay. this, we got yeah. a two front attack can, on this one, right? So let's, let's start with the beard. So I like this length. And what I'm going to recommend, Tyler, is that you don't go any longer than this right now. If, if anything, I would suggest going a little bit shorter and bringing in the sides of that beard, especially at the front, right where it comes off in the goatee. Because if we, if we see in this picture, we'll see that it's longer than the rest of the beard right there in the goatee. See how that kind of whips down into almost a little bit of a, not a swirl, but like it comes down and you can really see like the yeah. little bob of it. Right? Yeah, yeah, it starts to where it starts to curl. Yeah, it, it, yeah, exactly. It's curling in on itself. So I would cut that up just a little bit, bring it up to the rest of the beard and then maybe take down three fourths of an inch, half of an inch, okay? Just so that we get a little bit more uniformity because what I've found with my own beard is that when you let the beard grow longer, right? Then the mustache, it ends up looking a little disproportionate. I know I've mm. said that with a lot of guys. What do you think about that? Yeah, uh, I would agree with your comments and suggestions on the chin, kind of bring everything in. Mm -hmm. uh, that could also just be uh, him needing to brush it with a boar's hair brush, maybe, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and kind of give that, make it fill in mm -hmm. a bit. But yeah, if if you do that, uh, Tyler, and it's not, it's not, doesn't have that nice shape. It's time for a trim yeah. uh, to trim that area and kind of bring it back in and give it some symmetry. Uh, but yeah, I I, I kind of like the the shorter mustache with this style. If it you were to good. grow it a little bigger and mm -hmm. fuller uh, in the beard area, then I would say go for the big mustache. And mm -hmm. you know, the band holds always suggests uh, or recommends if you got the big beard, go for the big mustache. Right. But in this case, this medium-sized beard, if you will, if mm -hmm. you had to put it in, I mean. We, 
shit, man, we're, we're always working to classify things <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, and yeah, categorize yeah. people and categorize but, styles. But yeah, if, if this, I would say this is about a medium sized beard and mm -hmm. this, and the mustache at this length looks good. If you're trying to keep it out of your mouth and away right. from your, away from your teeth. So let's, uh, let's take things upstairs a little bit. Let's talk about the hairstyle. Yeah. What do you, what do we think? What do you think? How do, how do we transform this? Now we don't necessarily have to go like, okay, let's overhaul this haircut, but there's two ones I'm picturing right now. The first is a slick back haircut, but I'm not a hundred percent sure about it this time. Usually I'm quick to jump on that slick back, but I'm almost kind of wondering what Tyler would look like with a really short cut hair, you know, like almost like a crop. <laughs> yeah. You know? you know, I, I probably would not go too much shorter. No, uh, no, because as you're receding mm. in your hair hairline, yeah. you don't want to, and I'm not sure what he's working with on the crown there, but, mm. uh, I would probably, I wouldn't go as short as I would go as short as Daniel Craig. Okay. That's, so yeah, like, that's what I'm kind of picturing. Yeah. Because then you could end up, if you do too much, you could end up looking like Jude law. Yeah. Where and it's you, almost and, disconnected. Yeah. Where it's almost disconnected mm -hmm. and you don't want that. So I think this style looks good on you, man, especially mm -hmm. with the size beard, this kind of medium to medium length hair yeah. on top, medium length beard works really well. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you wanted to change it up, you could grow the beard out a little longer and then go for some sea salt spray. There it is. <laughs> man, we got to have you like, we got to put your kombucha in a sea salt spray bottle. You just spray that shit just in your spray mouth. spray it into my mouth. Yeah, just spray it in. Yeah. I, I, you know, sea salt spray for, for guys with short, uh, hair like this and yeah. especially if it's maybe going into the widow's peak or it's mm. receding or it's a little thin right uh you know the sea salt spray is really going to be your best friend from a product perspective right uh so yeah man you know i think uh, i think the sea salt spray would go a long way and really kind of add to that add to his look but overall i, I dig the style i think it, you know you, what you're doing is, is great and to jack's point just make sure that that the, the chin hair is not growing now the chin and the neck will grow at the same speed for the most part, yeah, they're but usually faster. because the chin is extended out from your mm -hmm. neck, it looks like it's a little longer. Yeah. So, or the hair, it looks like the hairs are a little it's more longer. noticeable right? and it's more noticeable. So if you're not brushing that and being intentional with making sure it looks full, mm -hmm. yeah, it can look a little weird. So if it, if it is, and you've been trimming this on your own, so you're trimming the sides and you're letting the goatee hang off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd see a, a barber and maybe have them even that all out. So it's symmetrical. I dig it. Yeah. All right. Should we gong him? Let's gong him. Let me see if well, I can reach the gong now. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Number one in the bag. Number one in the bag. There he is. Who is Alrighty. this? All righty. Uh, I don't like the position of his... Okay. Sorry. That was bugging me. Got it. Oh. Oh, he's there gone. He is. There he is. <laughs> Welcome back. He's What's back. Randa doing back here? Okay. Here we go. Here we have Devin. Devin. He writes, hey there, my fellow beardsmen. My name is Devin, and I'm 28 years old. Hi, Devin. I'm just looking for advice and changing up my style. I'm currently in the process of growing my hair out, but normally I rock a two on the sides, taper, tapered with a slick back pompadour look. My man. And I go back and forth between a long beard and a short, clean looking beard. Okay. okay. Right now I dress like a skateboarder, normally wearing nice fit jeans and a basic t-shirt. Okay. I would like to rock a Greg Brzezinski style or a Carlos Costa. Um, Not a Jack but I don't know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I also have no idea how my hair will look longer. Okay. I've never grown it out and I don't really style it as much as, as now. Sure. I mostly wear a hat. Also, I'm a butcher by trade and have three amazing children ages 10, 2, and 9. Nice. And a gorgeous yeah. breast friend and wife. Beardbrand uh -huh. has helped me in many ways and I look forward to continuing to learn from you guys. Thank you. Oh, I like that. I really like that. Yeah, man. It's what it's all about. Yeah. Sweet. So let's uh, let's talk about our friend Devin. So first of all, I'm going to describe Devin for our audio listeners. Of course, remember SoundCloud, Spotify, and iTunes. If you didn't catch it live, let's see. He is rocking a let's say square squarish oval face, right? What would you say, Sylvester, in that face shape? Yeah, I would say probably like a square fa uh, yeah, face. Yeah, squarish, shape. squarish, kind of diving into maybe rectangular category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably where we're going to find that happy medium. So anyway, in terms of the beard style, let's see. He's got uh, probably a month and a half's worth of growth right there, with the thickest part of it being the goatee and then the mustache. We see that growth pattern of uh, the circle beard. It's kind of uh, going into scruffy goat tat category with the uh, sides being a little bit longer, but not enough to where they're like the full beard, where as we get into like the corporate beard or natural beard category. Now upstairs on the hair, again, he was saying he usually gets the two on the side, so you can see that's growing back in from the two. 
And on top, it is really thick, and it looks like he's kind of pushed it back with um, either something matte or in kind of like clay. Uh, other than that, he's on his couch, and he's wearing a black shirt, and he's got black gauges in the side, kind of hinting back towards that skater style that he was going for. All right, let's just jump right into it, man. Yeah, Nick, right? Ty or Devin. 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 I was like, where's sure Nick not come? Tyler? <laughs> Tyler was last. I'm I know, just, I like blank out the names. Every like, time, man, every week, I am like... Well, Tyler? in my mind, I'm going like, shape, shape, <laughs> shape, shape. Who is this? <laughs> so, yeah, man, like, dude, listen, number one, this is the Alliance show. Yeah. And what you sent into us is exactly, I mean, that's what the hell we're doing here. I love that, that little end piece you know, put. Um, yeah. And, you know, he talked about his family. If you mm. didn't hear that and you're just tuning in, rewind about 10 seconds back and yeah. you'll hear Devin. Devin. <laughs> you'll hear Devin uh, kind of share a little bit about his story. And that's what the Alliance is all about. Hit the, uh, the link in the description. Come find out what the Alliance actually is uh, and more. Uh, but, yeah, man, like, dude, Devin is killing the style. Mm -hmm. Like, now, you got to keep in mind, if you're going for the Carlos Costa or if you're going for the Greg Brzezinski, mm -hmm. now, Brzezinski uh, typically wears his beard a lot, a little longer. Yeah, a bit longer like, And this. it's not as manicured in the cheek line. I don't even think yeah. he t really needs to clean up his cheek line. He does every once in a while, but he okay. does that by plucking it, which well, is so pretty there, rare. So there you go. But... You know, so if if you're trying to go for the Brzezinski, which is why I started, what I started to say yeah. is you would probably want to invest a little bit more time and just grow it out. Yeah, I think he's at I, too early of a stage. Based on your genetics and what I'm looking at here, like you could get there probably within 30 to 45 days yeah, without trimming. That's realistic. Uh, you know, and then at that point, it's just a matter of making sure you hit up the barber shop, uh, a trusted mm -hmm. barber, maybe, you know, once a month to start out. Yeah. Uh, and then... <clears throat> Uh, if you're going for the Carlos Costa, man, like, I think you're pretty much nailing it for the most part. Yeah. Uh, and again, I can't tell if he's cleaning, like, everything up the j up on top of the jawline towards mm -hmm. the cheekline, Jack. But if you are, I would just simply stop uh, because you're doing, a, you're doing a great job on the, on the cheek line there. And all you got to do is just grow it out. And Carlos right now is rocking kind of like a corporate style beard. So yeah, it's keeps very it, tight. It's very tight, cleans up the cheek, cleans up the neck, and mm -hmm. then it grows about it two inches off his uh off his face mm -hmm. uh and so dude i think you're accomplishing that already uh and i really uh i really like the hairstyle as well like I do too it's, a, it's like, cool for a guy now again i'm gonna go back maybe all the guys who sent their photos in today are six two uh <laughs> but i would imagine my man here to be about six two as well pretty tall well Just built that, guy that long or that long that tall look yeah and you know so like Taller dudes uh, who are kind of like well-built guys, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that longer hair kind of complements them a lot uh, yeah. because it, it gives them proportion. If you're if you're tall mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and you you know you've got a big presence, like physical yeah. presence, right? Uh, you know, then then like not short, super short hair, and not super long hair. Don't don't yeah. take my words out of context, but right. like medium length hair, like what you've got now, is mm -hmm. really killing it. And, uh, and I think it complements the beard. It complements the hair. Uh, you've kind of got it like a little longer on top and the beard a little shorter. So I think that's key mm -hmm. uh, to pulling that look off. And then, man, like if you didn't catch the Scott Barnes show, like <laughs> go check out the dickies he was wearing. Yeah. Uh, because that's like epitome of California, like, like skater skateboarder style. style yeah, you know? And it's really cool. I really dig the style, actually. It might be mm. grabbing a pair of dickies for the summer. Yeah. Not, so not a bad choice. Uh, yeah, man. I think the d the dark shirt against mm -hmm. your light skin, light colored eyes, dark hair. Like, I think it just brings it all in. Yeah. Uh, and um, keep it keep it up. Yeah. I mean, I don't really have much. You know, the only other thing I could suggest is some sea salt spray. There it is, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. No, I mean it like <laughs> legit. Like for no, yeah, for yeah, every yeah. day when you don't want to like. Go through the hassle of like right. actually styling your yeah, hair. Yeah, like gonna get in clay. Just in there throw or some on damp hair. Throw some sea salt spray in there, and it's gonna mm. really give you hair. Especially if I'm looking at your hair, you got pretty dense, thick hair, but it it looks it doesn't look it looks medium to thin to medium textured hair. So I yeah. think the sea salt spray man will really go a long way for you. Sweet, yeah. I'd, I'd probably have to echo most of what you said on there. I like what he's doing. Um, I don't really. Yeah, you mentioned those dickies. I think that would go well with him. Uh, with the sea salt spray would be. Yeah, that'd be top notch. He's he was concerned he didn't know what his hair was gonna look like as it grows out. But oh yeah, I mean, 
I don't think that we know what it's going to look like when it grows out. Yeah. I think the only way you can find out is to just keep trying it. Yeah, and you know, another style that I think would look good on him too is mm. if he really decided to like dress it up, throw mm. on maybe an Oxford shirt or a button-down shirt sure. or something like that. Uh, our friend Greg Tuberville, who is in the chat right now, uh, last year at CXBB, you go to our YouTube channel and look up CXBB and look for Greg's video mm -hmm. uh, because he did like this real cool slick back hairstyle. Oh, I love that hairstyle, man. It and we use sea salt spray to help yeah. him get there with a little styling balm on the sides mm -hmm. to help push it back. But it kept Dude, that volume on top. But it kept I that really volume like on that top one. and it's still, it's like, it's kind of just like a, a more stylized version of what you've got going on now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, man, that'll bring it all in, bring that whole look in together. And again, another like California-esque look I think is rad. I dig it. Yeah. All right, man. Let's gong him. Let's gong him. Gong him. For, I can't reach the gong today. No, that's my gong today. <laughs> I'll let you gong the third one here. You take the stick. Oh, Jack's handing me go. his stick. Hey. Hey. Who do we have here? All righty, we have George. George. George writes, hello, my name is George. I'm 17 years old. Man, <laughs> get out of here. Dude. Yeah. Really? Seven, that's what he writes. That's wow. what it says. Sylvester, what are we doing with that? I one? don't know. Holy cow, this guy's Who's got next? We got I mean, this, right? we don't Yeah, you're, per, you're perfect. perfect. <laughs> all right, no, I'm just kidding. No, all right, come on, let's keep going. All right, so George, he's 17 years old. He says he's been growing um, his beard for about five months. I've trimmed an inch off the beard in early December. Okay. I'm trying to go for a Carlos Costa-like beard. Any style tips? Should I go for a different length? Thanks. Holy cow. Okay, would you like to describe our friend, uh, Sylvester? Uh, yeah, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> no, his name's Nick. No, <laughs> uh, Random, tell me his name again. I'm sorry. George. <laughs> George. George. So George is, uh, man, I mean, we were kidding, but George, like he said, is 17, and boy, does he have a beard like he is yeah. in his 40s. Like, yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a full beard, beard. This is a full beard. This is not a 17-year-old's no, no. beard. This is a full beard, so it's a very dense, thick, uh, dark colored. I would say probably black is his hair color. Yeah, definitely um, black. And uh, he does look like uh, he does have brown skin, so I'm assuming just on based on this photo that he might be... Uh, from uh, with our friends in the Middle East, so yeah. it's got uh, dark, uh, darker complected skin, kind of yeah, yeah. a little darker, shade darker than mine, um, and then dark hair, mm -hmm. and like I said, the beard is pretty well grown in, mm -hmm. uh, but he looks like he's keeping really good uh, maintenance of it because you can yeah. see he's got the line uh, going against the jawline there. Right. Uh, the shape of the beard at the bottom is is against the jawline, and it looks really sharp. His mustache, again, is really sharp and clean. Yeah, he's His cheek line it. looks pretty natural, but it does look like he might be keeping maintenance of that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my man has uh, got this really rad hairstyle where it's like I'll this like long pomp. Yeah. Uh, like a real real long like pomp on the top. Pomp, yeah. yeah, like a quiff, quiff, quiff pomp. Yeah. <laughs> Quiff, uh, but it's really long. Like I'm talking, mm -hmm. like maybe like eight inches long on top, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then short on the side, but not buzz cut. No, probably no. finger length cut, uh, if anything. But dude, man, like killer look, killer yeah. style, killer beard. Uh, oh, you appear wow. to be where. More importantly, George looks like he's really rocking this with a lot of confidence, and he's I got really a. Do like I would it. say it's a it's a green colored shirt, but it looks like yeah. one of those old school baseball shirts. He does look like a baseball yeah. shirt, doesn't it? Yeah, baseball underneath. Like an under baseball shirt. It complements his skin tone really well. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think it's I like that. a real cool look. All right. So, man, how do we even offer advice to a guy like this? Because this guy's already killing it. If my beard could have looked like this at 17, I don't think I ever would have found a beard brand video. <laughs> so, George, man, what I can say to this is uh, if you are going for the Carlos Costa style, keep it growing. And let's, I mean, okay, so this is where it gets tricky. We're going to take a look at the mustache first of all, because Carlos has got a much bigger mustache than George does right yeah, now. Yeah, he does. At 17, <clears throat> I'm not sure if he's going to be able to grow out a mustache much bigger than this. Everything else, the coverage is fantastic. Yeah, I don't see any patches in, the, in this thing whatsoever, except for maybe those two underneath the bottom web that we see on like almost every single guy. Um, maybe grow up the cheek hair a little bit more, but Man, I'm at a loss for words of this one. He's even got a great shape on the sides. Looks like he's fresh out of the barber shop, honestly. Yeah, man. I think if you're going for Carlos's style beard, like mm -hmm. one, I probably would say it needs to go a little shorter. On okay. The, on the on maybe the in sides. the bottom part. Yeah, just at the bottom. It needs mm -hmm. to come in a little bit. Yeah. You know, again, one thing about Carlos's beard is he rocks it pretty close yeah. um, to his face. It's not not shaved or not yeah. like stubble, but he actually rocks it really well groomed. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize that. And a lot of people don't may not realize that. But mm -hmm. 
Uh, but yeah, he, I would go a little shorter. And then uh, to, if you are able to grow out your mustache, George, then I probably would recommend you set out to grow that mustache. Uh, the cool thing about, about the Carlos Costa mustache and beard is he visits the barbershop probably once a week. <laughs> He's definitely in there once and a week, And yeah. he has his mustache trimmed by Mahesh mm-hmm. or wherever he's at at the yeah. time uh, by a trusted barber yeah. to keep it out of his mouth, basically. Mm-hmm. So from afar, the appearance of it is actually pretty full and, and long. Right. But when you actually get up close, it's kind of, um, it's, you can it's, see it's that it's shorter. not in yeah, his it's, mouth. It's not super yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So grow out the mustache. And then Carlos r- usually rocks... Uh, Maybe just a just a half inch shorter on top on top for the mm-hmm. head hair, yeah. Um, and right now I think he's doing something similar where it's kind of just wispy and crazy, yeah. Uh, up on top, but he definitely uses sea salt spray. He's definitely using some sea salt some spray. sea salt spray to get that volume in there. So mm-hmm. yeah, I recommend some sea salt spray, and uh, <laughs> and I don't think you would necessarily need sea salt spray in your beard, but. Uh, Give it a shot, Greg. Yeah, does it. I mean it looks like you're you're caring for the beard as well, mm-hmm. pretty well. So I just keep doing that, man. Yeah. Now let me let me. He didn't ask this question, but I, I got this one on my mind. What do you think is George's fragrance of choice? If we had to peg him for a fragrance, right? I, you know, if I had to guess, I would say he's an old money guy. Really, I was going to say four vices. Really? Yeah, I just see him as kind of a four vices <laughs> kind of guy. I don't, I don't know what Carlos's favorite one is. I think it's old money, but yeah. I don't know. I feel like even though this guy is kind of emulating Carlos's style to an extent, I don't feel like he would follow suit on the way that he would smell necessarily. Yeah. I would see more of four vices for George. Yeah, I would. I would say old money is your, yeah. is your go-to man, but I that's mean, always like a, a good safe bet for guys. It I is. Love that one. It is, but I don't know. Something about it just says old money. Like yeah. something says to me, he likes a real potent fragrance. Like you know, something you know, pretty what? present. Now that I kind of reconsider it, because he's kind of got that older look to him, even though he's a younger guy, kind of an old soul, maybe old money yeah i don't know old soul and old money who knows yeah either way we're just appreciative <laughs> that you sent in our picture and man oh man do i feel uh like my 17 year old beard wasn't so great <laughs> anymore <laughs> all right but anyway thank you so much for sending your picture george hey, man. appreciate it keep on growing george keep on growing gong em. all right and so that will bring us into our special topics today where we kind of teased this at the beginning the bitter rivalry or maybe not rivalry at all of barbershops versus salons. Now, this is where things get a little interesting, and I brought a few pictures in here today. And uh, if we can throw up the first one, we can kind of get an idea of... I was going to mention a couple of things. That's not... Wait, is that the first one? What? That's the first one. That's the first one? Okay, so this is interesting then. So I'll change my story a little bit, because I don't know if you knew this about me, Sylvester. I didn't grow up going to barbershops. Okay. Like, I never went to a barbershop until I was probably about 18 or 19 years old. <laughs> Woo! There it is. Ah, I'm getting a fright. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh, God, the chair. Um, <laughs> Sylvester, no. No, it's just a little foot rest. These <laughs> things move. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't grow up going to barbershops. I grew up going to salons. And it Got wasn't it. until college that I went to barbershops. And it's actually this one right here was my very first one. This is the co-owner of a place called Chop. It's in Tallahassee, Florida. I went there when I was going to Florida State. And it was really the first barbershop I ever went to. I always had grown up going to barber or, uh, salons. And it was kind of a weird experience going to a barbershop. And I, I was kind of, I wasn't anti-barbershop, but I just never really considered it something that I'd ever do. I mean, I remember you mentioning that you had people in your family that would cut your hair as you grew up. Yeah, Jack, you know, I think uh, I kind of grew up uh, in a similar boat going to a salon. Yeah. Um, and I think that habit kind of translated into my teenage and young adult years. Yeah. Uh, because I just thought, that's where you got the best haircut. Yeah, I did too. Uh, but my, uh, yeah, I had relatives that are, you know, I have relatives still that mm-hmm. are um, hairstylists here mm-hmm. in Austin, Texas. Yeah. And uh, and then my mom, I grew up with my mom cutting my hair every right. now and then. Uh, and then I eventually ended up getting to the point where I just started cutting my own hair. You started doing um, yourself. But I, I started visiting the barbershop when I was, man, 23 24 yeah I so changed, later in life. i changed it up mm-hmm. uh and it, yeah i mean we i've got some things we could talk about to kind of you know show yeah. the difference between the two mm-hmm. and i think if you take anything away from this conversation it's just simply that at this point at this day and age it just doesn't matter what matters is that you establish a connection with mm-hmm. a stylist or a barber that kind of hits that sweet spot right where you, they know exactly what you want and how mm-hmm. to give it to you. Uh, 
<laughs> you know, and yeah. so, uh, you know, just making sure that, uh, that you find that and establish that connection with them. And right. that's key. It doesn't matter if they're in a barbershop or if they're in a salon. And I'll tell you, I think that's actually the reason why I was scared to go to barbershops. There was almost this like hurdle of, oh God, these are all a bunch of masculine dudes when I was just kind of like this shrimpy kid growing out of his beard for the first time. And, you know, I went in there and I didn't know anyone in there. I didn't have an established one. I'd always just grown up going to the ones that my mom would suggest, like, oh, this person's good. This is a great stylist that you can go to. And that's that's really what it was. But nowadays, I think you're totally right. There really isn't that much of a difference. I mean, obviously there are little differences here and there, but I think if you build up that relationship, you can get a great haircut at either one. Yeah, you know, I mean, let, I mean, I think to understand like the context of what we're talking about, yeah. you have to understand where we came from, right. where it came from, right? Mm -hmm. And that is in that barbershops traditionally, um, speaking traditionally, like old, school, you know, like yeah. the in the traditional form, it used to be a man's place to yeah. to go and get his shave every yeah. week, and you oh, yeah. you didn't do that, you were not a man, you yeah, know, like exactly, uh, and so. Uh, and then again, speaking, you know, historically and, and just based off of what history's taught us, like the salon was where the women went yeah. and that's, that's where the ladies, that was a lady's place to connect. And mm -hmm. the barbershop was a guy's place to connect. Right. And, uh, but now that nowadays, man, things have transformed so much yeah, they really and have. they've changed so much, uh, that, you know, um, I mean, it really, again, kind of going back to the point, it just depends on, on what your goal is. It depends right. on if you've got a connection with that barber or hairstylist. Mm -hmm. You know, traditionally speaking, barbers are going to offer, I mean, that's where dads took their sons and sons right. took their sons, you know? So it's been something that's gone on for generations. So if you're a father, mm -hmm. taking your kid to the barber shop might be something you want to invest in, and that's an experience you're willing right. to, 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 to give. Uh, but yeah, especially if you're rocking facial hair, man, like yeah. the barbershop traditionally, uh, speaking is going to be able to, and again, we're speaking on very general, vague terms, yeah. but you know, the barbershops, uh, going to be able to handle, uh, facial hair, yeah. uh, and uh, they're going to be able to handle shorter haircuts. Mm -hmm. Uh, typically they're working with clippers, right. Uh, I was going to mention that, you know, versus like, uh, clippers with a comb and some of them do have a yeah. comb, but, mm -hmm. or like the plastic comb that goes on top. Right. Uh, but most of them are going to be working with clippers and fades and shorter hairstyles, mm -hmm. uh, where the salon, uh, might be working, um, like a longer hair with a little bit longer hairstyle with yeah. color, but also offering a little more services like, yeah. you know, pedicures, manicures, um, waxings, yeah, almost you know, like esthetician things, throw back to our conversation about body, body hair, hair. Yeah, get back <laughs> in that territory again. and, uh, and you know, you might be looking to go there for, uh, for a particular service, but. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the barbers are, are starting to, nowadays, from what I'm seeing, barbers are really starting to, to expand their skill set yeah, into the, coloring and into longer hairstyles and focusing on scissor work. And hair salons are actually starting to focus on guys with beards. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to focus a little bit more on their clipper technique and fading. So really, again, to go back to tie it all together, like it mm -hmm. really just depends on finding that connection, establishing that connection. And then it doesn't matter if you visit a barbershop or if you visit a hair salon, they both right. offer incredible experiences. Mm -hmm. and it just depends on the kind of experience you're after. Yeah, absolutely. What that, you need, really. Exactly. It depends on the type of guy you are. And you can change. I mean, not, like we said, we, were, we grew up going to salons and we... Now we're in barbershops all the time. We're kind of in one right now. If you <laughs> want to put it to that. But it's yeah, interesting yeah. that you've mentioned the fact that like the gap is kind of narrowing because we have in the second picture. Can we pull that up real quick? Let me, I'm going to hope that it's the one I think it is. Okay, that's also the shop, the very one, the first one I went to. But let's see the third one. That's another one that's more like us. Let's see, four. Yeah, okay, here we go. So this is Shed Barbershop here in... Uh, Hey, hey. It kind of blends in the wall, doesn't it? Shout out to Shed. Yeah, so we've actually filmed a couple of things with Shed, and Shed was kind of one of the inspirations for the way that we've set up stuff here. So Shed, at least their Holly location, they've got two locations. One of them's a little bit more old school, but I'm seeing that gap really break down in barbershops with these new school kind of barbershops, you know, where things are really stark, very like everything has a purpose, very utilitarian, very mod. Yeah. And it's kind of cool seeing the, the sort of best of both worlds because when you go to a place like Shed, they have on their menu like, when you're selecting a barber, it's like, okay, do you want to get a haircut with a barber or do you want to get a haircut with a hairstylist? Oh, cool. And that's like a whole different can of worms between like what, what's considered a barber and what's considered a hairstylist. And from what I found, it's kind of like what you were saying. I look at it, I break it down in like the most basic ways, clipper versus scissors, right? Hairstylist is going to be a little bit more scissors heavy and barber is going to be a little bit more clipper heavy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, 
but even then, I've, I've filmed with hairstylists and with barbers, and I find that sometimes there isn't too much of a difference when you look at it from the outside. Yeah. Now, I'm sure the dude getting the haircut or getting the beard trim probably notices because I think we're, we're you know, we notice the th- most things about ourselves. But I don't know. I, I'm when it, when it comes down to choosing one or the other, I think it's just a matter of like, okay, who do I know better? Who can I have that connection with? Yeah, man. I mean, your experience is going to vary from place to place. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, so uh, it just matters on on the kind of experience you're after and the one that you click with the most mm-hmm. shed is a little more unique because they actually offer uh some like clothes and yeah this one supply. specifically it's like a offers supply clothes. and mm-hmm. uh they offer different things so like if you, you know and what's really neat is that this is an up-and-coming uh neighborhood here in austin too so yeah that's what's um, kind of cool about it yeah you're gonna find a lot of a lot of more, a lot more youthful guys but they also service to a wide range of, of clientele mm-hmm. if i understand right yeah, but if we go back to the picture before this, can I see number four real quick? I think it was three. There we go. This is on the other side, like the polar opposite. This is South yeah. Austin Barbershop. Yes. This is where I usually have been getting my stuff cut lately. Yeah. But it's weird because, you know, the second we walked in there, you know, it's a real small shop. It's like probably half the size of Shed. I really, I like both these places, but there was just something about the vibe of this one. And it's full old school style that I really, really enjoy. And this is the kind of place where it's like generational haircuts you know what i mean yeah man you know i've i've been fortunate to to travel with you here to this barbershop and they're excellent group uh excellent outfit here in austin texas and yeah again like they just they offer that full like uh that classic barbershop experience with the with the hot towel Mm -hmm. uh and you know um, a wet shave uh, like a straight razor shave as well yeah uh and you know a lot of banter a lot of a lot of back and forth and conversation and you know, shit talking and yeah, but and, that's kind of the and, that's kind of the vibe cool. of barbershop. Yeah, it's, and I it's like a lot that. of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I, for me speaking from my experience, again, I, mm. I cut my hair at home, so I do my own thing. But right. I think uh, you know, when I was 25 and I was going for a fade and I was mm. getting a shorter haircut style, shorter hairstyle, uh, I would go to a barbershop in Spokane, Washington. And oh yeah, it was very similar vibe to this place. I mean, they had some. They had like a an area where they would allow you to sit and there's right. magazines and yeah uh, and then they would also offer like you know beer and yeah that's water more and yeah and soda that. pop and mm-hmm. all that good stuff so uh yeah man i, I think it really again your your experience is going to vary from place to place but if you're on the fence and you're trying to figure out like you don't have that that barber shop and you or you don't have that salon mm-hmm. you know be willing to to try it out and like i said right. your your experience is going to vary from place to place but you're going to ultimately find one that works for you. So. Yeah, and I think that's perfect, the, the experience of like trying it out. Because I think a lot of people have commented, it's like, why doesn't Jack have like a permanent barber that he goes to? And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to have one. I'd, I'd love to have one. I mean, if I wasn't making videos, I'd obviously have like an established barber. But I like to just meet all these different types of people and just see like, okay, what does this guy cut hair like? What does this guy cut hair like? And it's just because everyone's got their own style, whether they're in a salon or they're in a barber shop, whether even in the barber shop, if they're a hairstylist or a barber. Yeah, and that gives. I I think it's cool that you're open to that that opportunity and that experience to kind of take things and experiment and Mm -hmm. take a risk and, you know, like at the end of the day, like you're pretty confident in yourself. Yeah, absolutely. The beard and the hairstyle doesn't really make up the confidence of Jack Malaco. Not not really. uh, You know, but uh, those your confidence allows you to uh, to highlight your hairstyle, your beard style, Mm -hmm. and. And really kind of uh, convey the full picture of who Jack is, right? So Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Part of it is the experience of actually going there. I like talking to the barbers and yeah. getting to know them and yeah, you know, establishing <laughs> that new friendship and stuff yeah. like that. It's yeah. fun. It's, Very it's cool. quite the little experience. It's I almost dig like it. I, I like to compare barbers, maybe even stylists in some respect. I don't know if I'd go as far with the stylist, but I like to compare barbers to bartenders, you know. <laughs> you come in and you can you can tell them everything. They know your secrets. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If, if there's one person I don't want to get out into the world and tell everyone everything, it'd be my barber. <laughs> now, thank God, that might go into the, another reason why I don't. Have one <laughs> Is that barber. why you diversify yeah, that's yourself? How, I diversify so that like 16 people know like 12 different stories about me, and if they all got together, I'm screwed. No. But I, I like the experience of like sitting down and talking with a barber. Some guys like to sit there and just be in complete silence, and that's not really my thing. I don't like to just sit there. I feel awkward. I'm like, well, here I am under this cape. I'm hot. And I might as well have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, just to kind of tie it back together for us, Jack. You know, like, I don't think that there is a. It's a debate. No. No, I don't think it's a debate of what's better. No. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a, it's a matter of like, 
knowing what's better for you or mm-hmm. what's best for you. What's going to serve your needs? Yeah. You know, if do you prefer sitting in a shop where there's a lot of other guys waiting for mm-hmm. to get the same objective done right. or do you prefer going to a little more exclusive place that's a little more quiet? Right. Uh, and they offer more variety of services and mm-hmm. you might pay a little bit more for that experience, but you're willing to play, pay for that uh, that exclusivity mm-hmm. uh, and that experience that that offers. Not Absolutely. to say that a barbershop can't offer that because they certainly oh, yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, it's just about the connection that you identify with most. It's like oh, it's like yeah. it's like a style of clothing or mm-hmm. a style of shirt. Like we were talking earlier about uh, California attire and skateboard yeah. attire, right? Like mm-hmm. that's one style. And then Absolutely. on the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got the dapper you know, uh, yeah. suspender bow tie style. The, yeah. So it just the depends bespoke. on the one that you identify with most. Right. And I think there's definitely something to be said with that. I mean, it even kind of goes into barbershops nowadays with that new school type where it's like, yeah, you are going to be paying a little bit more, but the experience of going to a place like that, I think for some guys can be, you know, second to none. Yeah. Right? Especially when it's one of those, you know, more high style places. Do we need to call out some winners yet? Or, we? Okay. Yeah. We're good. Okay. Sweet. I didn't want to like cut that off completely because no, I've got some more thoughts. I actually have a notebook. If you wanted to mention anything else, go for it, man. I had Let's some talk. notes on it because I, I wanted to, I had thoughts on this whole thing because this is something I'm actually pretty passionate about. Go for it. Let's a lot talk of people about it. Will, uh, you know, they'll ask like, why would you go to a, a, a hair salon? And it's like, but I'm. That's the thing is like, when I first experienced the barber shop, I'm like, oh, screw salons. I'm never going to go back to a salon. But you know, the more I look back on some of these places, I'm like, man, some of the best haircuts I've ever had were in a salon. Yeah, man. So, let me just grab this real quick. Because I had some thoughts on this. And, Go for it. Uh, and it, it does feel like I'm coming into this like I'm ready to attack one or the other. I'm like, oh, no, but man, this, it's but good. then this. But it's... Share your thoughts. I think that's what's kind of interesting about it. So it's like, like, like I said, I, I grew up going to salons. Mm-hmm. And as, as I got older, I kind of broadened my horizons. And there, was, there definitely was that fear. There's something a little bit inherently intimidating to me as a man, right? Who sometimes we struggle with our masculinity in some respect. When we go into a barbershop that's kind of old school or something mm. like that. There can be that intimidation, especially if it's a place like uh, Gentleman Rogues, where they banter. You know, all the barbers know each other. And you notice that sometimes with the clients that sit down, they go completely silent. Like they don't want to <laughs> say anything because they're like, oh, God, these guys have got their own thing going. And I don't want to be a part of this because they're going to call me out on it or something like that. And that can be a little bit intimidating. And I did feel that the first time I went to a barber shop. I was like, oh, everyone in here knows each other. And I've like encroached on like a, the neighborhood barber shop. I can see that. Like that. And it really wasn't. It wasn't like no, a neighborhood barber but shop, but I could see there was definitely feel that, that feeling. And I'd never felt that in a salon before. So that's one thing you've got to consider is like, there might be that little bit of a hurdle at the beginning. Now, I'm sure a lot of guys growing up, like if you grew up going to barber shops, it's like, yeah, whatever. And right. maybe it's the other experience. If you go to a salon, you're like, uh oh, all these people know each other and I'm the odd one out. So, yeah. you know, just considering it. And then, of course, you know, uh, there's the long hair thing that salons, I think, will handle it a little bit better. A hairstylist might handle it better. Now, it's not always necessarily true. I've seen a barber cut long hair pretty well. But in my experience, I do find that the salon will offer you a little bit more when you come in with the longer hair. And then, uh, you know, the one thing I did want to say was um, uh, I personally like the energy of a barber shop a little bit more. There's something about it. You know, I it did intimidate me a little bit, but nowadays I kind of thrive on it. I know that it's okay to have that silence to maybe not always participate in the conversations that are going on between the two barbers, but I just like being in that moment. I like going there. I feel a little bit happier every time I leave the barbershop. Like, man, I just had an experience. It was almost like going to a bar, going back to that bar tender, uh, you know, metaphor. Yeah. I don't know. Do you notice that whenever we go like check out new barbershops, they're like, oh, I like the, the vibes in here. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't most definitely. I mean, I think every establishment is, is aiming for, uh, an experience for their clients. And like I said, times are changing, man. Like mm-hmm. the old school traditional way. I, I think I kind of appreciate when a barbershop offers reaches to the past and kind of offers this old school yeah. meets new school. Uh, and it becomes, it becomes a relevant mm-hmm. establishment, right. you know? Um, if I had it my way now, I probably would end up in the barbershop. Yeah. For sure. Mm. Uh, But I probably would focus more on finding a a barber who is skilled at achieving what I'm looking for at that time as well. Whether that be like a skin fade or a pompadour. Whether it's a skin fade or a pompadour or or they're going to help me grow out my hair to achieve a style. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, it's about building the key to it is just building that connection, building that relationship, communicating effectively, clear and concise. Yeah. And then, you know, if your barber can't uh, he can't meet that need or can't meet that expectation, right. then, you know, you got to reassess from there. But 
Uh, I don't think you should just limit yourself to say, I only will go to a barbershop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I only will go to a hair salon. Like mm, That's just kind of being a little bit close. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the barbershop and the salons have served hair and served for served people for generations. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's important is to find, a, like I said, is finding a, an establishment that uh, yeah. allows you to offer a little new school, old school experience yeah. and then marries it together to give you exactly what you're looking for. I think a great example of this that just kind of popped in my head was if you ever watch a video of Greg Brzezinski interacting with Jake the Barber, yeah. there's that connection. Or, you know, even Greg interacting with Justin the Barber. Either one of those two, there's just that, you can feel that spark like they know each other. There's a very kind of brotherly bond For sure. between the two. Hell yeah, man. Three of Absolutely. Those guys. And it's it's cool because I literally have never met Jake before. And I'd love to see how he interacts with Greg in person. Because I've seen how Mahesh interacts with Carlos in person. I've met Mahesh and I've met Carlos, and mm -hmm. I've seen them both together in the same room. Yeah. And there's definitely that connection there. They're almost like best friends. Right. But there's there's almost like a a more professional level between Greg and Jake and Greg mm -hmm. and Justin mm -hmm. that it's really interesting, and I really like seeing the way that they work because you really see that Jake and Justin understand the way that Greg likes to have his beard cut and likes yep. to have his hair cut, and it turns out with great results, I think. Yeah, man. We'll get to see that. Live yeah, I was gonna person. say, did you, should we, well, should we uh, yeah, talk we about can. that just it's, a little bit? It doesn't matter, man. Well, yeah, sure. Hey, yeah. So why don't we just segue <laughs> into that right in there? You see, I, I'll put that down. Well, Let's pick it up. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know, Greg and Jake and Carlos and Mahesh, mm. uh, they're all coming into Austin. Yep. Uh, and in three weeks, in twenty-one days, oh, we'll, it's coming close, man. we'll be converging right here on the campus of Beard Brand in this very room. in this very room, which is why you might have seen the new setup. Yeah, man, uh, it's we're becoming growing. a barbershop, it, it's, boy. Yeah, it's it's growing, it's evolving, and next week we may add a few more elements to the pie, but we'll mm. see. Uh, but yeah, there. Uh, if you want to get more information on that, I believe it'll be in the description. I think there's links in the description for that. Okay. If not, I'll put it in. And if fact. not, then uh, and if you're listening by audio form, yeah. uh, so go over to beardbrand.com and look up. You can just go to the search feature and type in Alliance Conference. Mm -hmm. Find all the uh, all the perks for for getting a ticket. And yeah. there's two different ticket options now. So definitely check those out. But come join us, man. Come hang out. And we call it a conference, but it's really going to be real private, real intimate, very handful, of, small handful of people yeah. uh, getting together. And there's going to be really cool. Uh, actually, we haven't really shared much on this, but there's going to be some really great uh, people who are going to be coming to Beard Brand, yeah. to the campus that are that are based here in Austin, Texas. And they're going to be sharing their perspective uh, and they're pretty successful people if I, I may yeah, say in their own right yeah. yeah and so they'll be talking uh, on different various topics on you know how you they overcame adversity to become successful and, right uh you know just different different ideas different topics hopefully mm -hmm. they'll they'll inspire you they'll sharpen your perspective maybe uh, help you think of things a little bit different but this is a place to come and get that yeah. along with a haircut style consultation i mean dude it's loaded up with it's the full really cool stuff it's like the full nine yards yeah and are we still we're still at trying to do the the live show with people here, yeah right? yeah well well i think uh arthur uh my friend jersey boy is going to be coming in oh that's awesome uh, man. and we'll have possibly michael michael mm -hmm. might be here i'm not sure just yet but i know we'll have a few yeah. uh guys who are, are are excited to be here they'll be getting here a day before and mm -hmm. We'll be hosting this live stream, and hopefully yeah. they'll be able to join us for that too. So yeah, I was gonna say if they are coming to that, I'd be more than happy to host yeah. them during this part. It's yeah, gonna be fun having some live studio audience. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe have them crash the stream. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. yeah. But I'm looking forward to that because it seems it's gonna like be it, fun. Yeah, it seems like it's gonna be a fun time. And then we'll have, of course, the party the night. Uh, actually, the second night, that Thursday, the 21st, it will be, you know, downtown. Yeah, It'll yeah. That's not to mention, like, hey, if if this is uh, if you're not interested in coming to to the Alliance Conference, we are throwing a big big old party oh, yeah. on Thursday night. It's called CXBB. So that's Celebration by Beard Brand, if you're nasty. Celebration by Beard Brand. And so it's an opportunity for you to come hang out with everybody. Mm -hmm. It's a That party is open to the public. That one's public, um, yeah. And so uh, it, we'll have live music and we'll have, um, you know, all sorts of you get to hang out with I us. I mean, it is, it's just going to be a fun, fun night yeah. of hanging out, getting to know everybody and yeah. All the all of Beard Brand will be there. All of our all of yeah, our yeah, whole nine yards. Everyone, all of our teammates will be there, oh, and yeah, we'll be hanging be out. Jake, and actually, Greg, Randa Carlos. behind the computer, oh yeah, is hosting and throwing that party. So yeah, it's gonna she's be, put it together. So it's, it's gonna, gonna really be a lot cool. of fun. Yeah, I've been working since I got hired on this party, basically. So mm -hmm. I hope it's gonna be awesome and big enough, and <laughs> it, it will be awesome. I'm yeah. not even hoping it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. 
Yeah, man. Sweet. But yeah, man, I'm really looking forward to that. That's, I mean, cool. Not even three weeks from now. It's 21 happening. days, baby. Jeez. It's, it feels like it's just tomorrow now. Yeah. It's yeah. And I'm sure everybody will be like, okay, they can stop talking about it now. Yeah, it's over. I know. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be like one of those things like, well, after it's over, it's like, how are we going to, what are we going to talk about it now? Yeah. Let's you start know, talking about the next one. Man, if it's your thing, it's your thing. If not, cool. We'll, maybe we'll catch you at next year's. Yeah, exactly. But let's, uh, why don't we tie it back into the barbershop thing as we yeah. close out this thing? And, um, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those situations where I feel like maybe after I get my next haircut, I might try out the salon again, but I don't know. There's, there's certain styles that I feel like I'm more confident going to the barbershop for like a side part. You yeah. Know? I think that's the next hairstyle I'm going to go for. Nice. But with the nice hard part in there. And hopefully this video, if I, if it's the one, you know, a little cowboy special going on, it'd be really interesting. I don't want to spoil anything, but this we're, we're putting together something pretty fun for this next one. <laughs> I feel like good things happen when we go and get our haircut. Any, any one of the, you know, from the channel goes yeah, and gets their haircut, yeah. I feel like good things happen. Absolutely. So really I actually excited. have a barbershop story that just popped into my head, kind of as like an outsider's point of view. Sweet. Can we, is the camera on you right now? Not yet. Sweet. Can we have it on you? Ta-da. Okay. Ta-da. So... Um, I would go with my dad and my brother sometimes to go get their haircut mm -hmm. at a barbershop that was really similar to um, the South Austin barbershop okay. that we film out a lot. And um, so they got their haircuts, they got done. I thought that we were going to go to some salon to do mine and he sits me up into the chair. I'm maybe like five or six and Whoa. he goes, no, you're going to get your sh haircut here. Uh-oh. Did he whip out like, clippers? All I see is like clippers everywhere, buzzing. And so I start bawling, oh. little tiny Randa, because I think that they're going to shave my hair off. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's the first thing that I thought about. I'm like, barbershop guy, I go to salon, I mm -hmm. go to wherever my mom goes. But um, he did a great job. He, he gave me bangs. <laughs> it was great. And that, I mean, there ever since then, I was like, okay, I can trust these guys. Yeah, it's see, just fine. It's about establishing that trust and getting over that first hurdle. But uh, as we close this out, I did see with that we had a few questions. Did yeah, you want to grab those real quick? I'm sorry. There. I know we keep ignoring these. No, so no, I always we, we say that we, have, we want to answer some questions. Time. Yeah, let's sure. see if we can answer these before we get out of here. And then we'll call out the winners. Don't worry, guys. We still we know that you're there. Yeah, so Beards and Banjos asks, how is maintaining that low cheek line? Is it difficult or aggravating for you, Jack? Oh, the new cheek good, line? Yeah, the new L shape. I actually find it easier to maintain than the other one. Because my issue with the other one was... Um, I didn't really have a certain spot that I was like, okay, I'll pick this spot and then maybe shave there. And then each time I might go a, bit, a little bit lower. Um, that was actually more difficult than doing this where it literally, where the hair grows right here on the sides of my mustache gives me a clear indication of where I need to shave. So I actually like that a lot more. And I shave my neck a lot less nowadays. So do with it with that what you will. Yeah, man. I don't know. Would you say now that you've rocked that L shape for a while, do you are you the L shaped guy? Or are you the round shape? What's, well, what's, you your, this, what's your take I, on it? I was I was kind of on the fence about it until my girlfriend said it gave me more of a jawline. Oh, and now I'm like, well, you know what? Yeah, baby. If she's, <laughs> if she's into the beard at all, you know, I'll take that as a win because usually she's like, oh, man, I wish she didn't have a a, uh, a beard. But I'll tell you this, man. Check this one out. So I go, you know, I, I'm thinking about this, honey. I'm thinking about dropping down to a circle beard. Mm. I, I want to get rid of the uh -oh. side. I want to get rid of the L. And she's just looking at me. I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, I don't want to say it. It's going to be me. And I'm like, oh, no, what, uh -oh. what is, it? is it? Am I going to look like a, like a dad or something? And she's like, no, your, your jawline's not very strong these days. So oh. Going, oh, you got to be kidding me. Well, now i got to keep the beard. Oh, man. But who knows? Maybe when Mahesh and Jake come out here, we'll, we'll see about taking the beard completely off, going down to the circle beard. Because I've always wanted to try that. And I always was a big fan of the Van Dyke. Maybe I'll go down to that. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see, man. Make you never know. Jack line. Malaco. Anyway. All right. Do we have our winners now, Randa? Or do we need a little bit more time? Should we answer some Let's more answer questions? Let's answer one more question. Um, one more. I found one. It says, sure. if I decide to grow my cheek lines higher, how do I avoid looking like crap in the first and second month? Mm. Oh, yeah. I was actually thinking about that because I was like, maybe I should grow mine back up. But I'm like, how am I going to do that? Um, my advice is it's, well, you can look at it two ways. I mean, you probably have a different opinion on this. Go for it. But let me... Uh, I think there's two ways. You can either do it the first way, which is just let it grow. And yeah, it's going to look weird at the beginning, but you did the same thing when you grew your beard out the first time, man, it looked kind of weird at the beginning and you got through that. So those two to three weeks might be a bit strange, but it, it grows in a lot faster than you think it will. And then the second option is you can, can drop them completely down, go for the scruffy goat, you know, where you keep the circle beard and let that grow in a little bit. And it looks a little bit more intentional then. Yeah. And 
as it completely grows out, you trim down the mustache and you trim down the goatee so that it matches the growth on the sides and on the neck. That's the other way I look at it. What Got are it. you going to say, though? Uh, yeah, I mean, my take is uh, it depends on how fast your, your hair grows. Yeah. So you got to gauge it on that. But a general rule of thumb, I probably would go three to four weeks, mm -hmm. uh, let it grow out. And then from there, if it's starting to look really crazy, yeah. you know, just start to clean it up the uh, f clean it up from the top down. Yeah. I mean, you probably could speak a little better to this, but from my experience, you probably want to just find where that natural uh, cheek line uh, yeah, grows like in. Pick and either then, the downward one. Then establish your line from there. Mm -hmm. Be sure not to cut too far into your into your cheek, but. But yeah, man, that's I think that's that's great, man. If you're looking to grow grow it out and you don't want to look crazy for, uh, I wouldn't say two months is necessary. I think two to three weeks, and then I reevaluate at the end of that three weeks, and then yeah, see where that. you are. Yeah, because I think a lot of guys are scared to grow it back out. Like if they drop the cheek line down, like yeah, yeah. I have, they're like, oh god, now I got to commit to this. Like, you should never be scared yeah, of dude, that. Yeah, okay. just grow it out and don't, uh, you know, like uh, don't um, don't be scared to, to give it a shot. And yeah. definitely, I would say. Don't take away from the time you've already invested into growing yeah. your beard. Yeah, keep on just taking keep it, care of just, it. Just yeah. grow and then give it that three week, then three week mark, and then reevaluate. It's so. like the equivalent of going like, "Oh, I got this hundred cut. Now I can never grow the hair out the sides again because that's going to look weird while it grows out." It's like, yeah, man. Come on, man. Yeah. You're all good. Yep. All right. Do we have our winners now? We do. Sweet. Congrats, Brian Bonds, Michael Bassford, and Flag. Sweet. Whoa. Congratulations, Congratulations. to our three Brian, Michael, and Flag. And <laughs> that wow. has some noise to it, man. I feel like that, that one was picked hard. up pretty well. We have two more minutes, and there was one question that I saw that I feel like is so relevant. Sure. Can someone give a brief description of what sea salt spray actually is used for? <laughs> The hair, the beard, like, I, if we talk about it every week, Dude, I guess drink a good it. description no, would be... Don't drink it. Seriously, would be don't nice. Drink. Okay. Do you want to say it, or do you want me? I feel, like it's, it. I feel like it's your favorite thing. I feel like... Here, you you start describing I'm going to go get one. Go get There's one. There's one on that shelf over there. Yeah, so sea salt spray is, uh, is a product that we develop here at Beard Brand, um, and it allows you to get some volume and... Thank you. Thank you. And it allows you to get some volume in your hair. It also allows you to get some texture in your hair without putting a heavy weighted product in your hair. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's designed, if you've ever gone to the beach or the coast uh, and you've spent a day there and then you kind of, um, kind of get back to your hotel or wherever yeah. you're staying, uh, then you might notice like your hair is just incredibly like... It's got this cool texture to it, It's got this really it, right? cool texture to it. Um, and so uh, that's what this is designed for. It's mm -hmm. wrapped into this bottle. And, and this one here is produced to the beard brand standard. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, it doesn't have any silicones, any sulfates, any parabens no, it does uh, not. in it. And it's going to, uh, it's really going to, to me, it's, it's like a, an other, another tool in your toolbox mm -hmm. yeah. that's going to help you accomplish a goal uh, yeah. with your hairstyle. So if you're going for a pompadour, mm -hmm. uh, sea salt Ooh. spray might be really good for you to put in your hair. Yeah. Uh, after the shower, you can apply it to wet or damp, wet to damp hair. Yeah. Depending on, on you got to play with it, but depending on your texture of your hair. Right. Uh, and then towel dry that or blow dry that into I shape. I like the blow dryer, yeah. Yeah, and really then that's well. going to really allow, like it's just going to be a really cool thing for you mm -hmm. to uh, accomplish that goal. That's yeah. my take on it, man. I saw one commenter put, it's basically good hair or good beard in a bottle. Yeah. Right? It's like that little extra push. Yep. I really right. like it. Yeah, I think if you've got medium to uh, medium textured hair mm -hmm. or less in your beard, like it's a really good option to give you some structure, some hold mm -hmm. in your beard uh, as well. Uh, if you've got thick textured hair, probably like Jack, I probably wouldn't go for, for the beard. Salts, no, I don't use it. In my not beard. for the beard. For the yeah, oh, for the know, beard. For the beard, I don't I'm use it. In my yeah. beard. for my head hair, I use it every single day. Yeah, man. And it's I dig it. And it's probably the easiest product we have to yeah. apply. Yeah. So that's why. It, you know, because like if you put a beard oil in, it's like, okay, now I got these this oil on my hand. And I usually just rub that in and I'm fine. Yeah. But even if you want to take it a little step further of like doing less, that is really good. Especially if you haven't showered too. You know, some guys will use it like, oh, it just adds a little bit of texture to it. Yeah. And it smells incredibly good it too. It does. It smells really good. And Depending you know on what your I like? fragrance. I like getting it in uh, Temple Smoke. It, for some reason, out of all of them I've tried... The Temple Smoke one smells really, really good if you use a blow dryer right after that. I learned that from watching nice. one of Greg's videos. I was editing one of Greg's <laughs> videos, and he's like, it smells really good. And I'm like, oh, i got to try this. So I go and grab one, <laughs> and I spray it in there, and I, I uh, start blow drying my hair, and it smells really, really good. 
That's awesome. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers what sea salt spray actually is. Um, yeah, I think yeah, we in did. In a nutshell, yeah, in a bottle. That's sea salt spray, man. So don't drink it. Put it in your hair. <clears throat> yeah, put it in your beard yeah. if you like. Uh, and that's, that's really, yeah, give it a shot if you've never tried it. It's, I feel like it's one of those products that we sell that everyone's like, oh yeah, that, you know, they sell mostly beard stuff and they don't even think about stuff like this. They yeah, man. About the you just got to be. Re- think about it. You got to remember to shake it up because yeah. it, uh, that it's got a clay in it that's going to stick yeah. to the bottom. You so you want to shake that up before you use it. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's the sea salt spray. Sea salt. <laughs> sea salt spray. It's a sea but, salt spray. <laughs> and with that excellent tongue twister, I think that brings us to a close. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for everyone who submitted uh, their photos for the style consultations. If you weren't picked today, don't worry. It's not that we ignored you. It's just that you didn't get picked for this one. We got plenty of episodes on the way. Yeah, Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you guys at the end of March. I'll say one more thing. Absolutely. If you uh, if you are tuning in every week or pretty frequently and you love and appreciate oh, this yeah. show, uh, do us a favor. Invite yeah. a friend. Share this with a friend. Absolutely. Share the podcast with a friend. Uh, invite them in. Uh, and uh, let them hang out with us and get to know us and we'll all yeah. get to know each other. So Drop a review always, on iTunes. Yeah, let, share it via Spotify. Share this YouTube video. Yeah, give us your feedback. Let yeah. us know what you think of the show. We want to hear about it. Uh, that helps us uh, continue to like think through and yeah. optimize this show so that we can give you the best content available for Absolutely, men's grooming. If there's anything we do here that has like immediate feedback, it's probably this because we implement things on a weekly basis. Thank you so much again for yeah, uh, coming on in. And until we see you again, hey, keep on growing. Yeah, keep pushing forward. See you soon. See ya. Let's get it going. Check this out. Sweet. Yeah, hit him for the front. Here we go. Yeah. Woo! Sweet. See you guys. Bye-bye.